Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be advancing on the mini map that we made in the last episode, and I'm going to be making it so that we can open this up to be a much bigger map by pressing M, and we're also going to be able to have an arrow above the player, or an arrow as the player, sorry, instead of the player on the map. So it'll be an arrow icon. So I'll show what this is like now. If we hit play, you can see that up in the top left hand corner, we have our mini map, and this is now an arrow instead of the player, and we can't see the arrow, and the map can't see the player. So that looks a lot better as you can tell. And also if we press M, this is going to go into a much bigger map. Press M again, it's going to go down. And we can also make this so this bigger map is more zoomed out if you wanted. So I'll show you how to do this now. So our first step is going to be to import our arrow icon that we want to use. So I've just got a very quick, very basic arrow, which I'm going to import now. So if I just import this, drag and drop it in, map arrow, like so. You can see that this has a white background and it is a black arrow. So you're going to want to keep that as a white background as well, or black if your arrow is white. So we're going to open that up straight away. And the reason we're doing that is because we're then going to take chroma key texture here, open this color, hit the eyedrop tool there, and press the background like so. After we press OK, this is now a PNG with a transparent background. Now you can import a PNG as well, but that can sometimes be a bit glitchy, a bit laggy, doesn't always work the way you want. But if we do it this way, we can just get rid of the background very easily in engine like so. Also in here, what we're going to do is under the texture group, we're going to change it from world to UI. Once you've done that, we can save and close this. And that just means it will keep the transparent background, which is obviously what we want. So as you can see here, we now have the transparent background in the render view there. Once we've done that, we're going to right click this and create a material. I'll just keep it with that name and open this up as well. So now we have this material here. If we wait for the render to appear, you'll see that this probably isn't what we want. So we're going to be able to fix that as well. So as you can see, this is just black all over, meaning when we use this, it will just be a black image, which again isn't what we want. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get the alpha value and put that into the opacity mask. But to do that, we need to select this first. So select the material output there, change the blend mode from opaque to translucent. Then we can plug the alpha into opacity like so. And so now this should work as it's going to take the opacity value, which is obviously the background that we've got rid of and keep that in here. So now we just have the arrow and no background. So if we wait for this to load, wait for it to all apply, we should see this working perfectly. So as well, actually, while we wait for it to load, what we can do is press this icon at the bottom right here, because as you can see, this is working, but it doesn't look like it is. If we press this here, so it says, sets the preview mesh to a Q primitive. If we press that and wait for it to apply again, this should look a bit better as it should now put it on a, on a cube, meaning it should look better than on a sphere. Now, this doesn't actually make a difference at all in anything, so you don't need to do this. If you do, it won't mess anything up. This is purely just for us to preview it to see what it's going to look like. So there you can see it looks a lot better. We have our arrow there. Obviously we have all of these on a cube, but we only need to have this one, which is what we will have. So we can save and close that. Then what we're gonna do is open up our character blueprint. So mine's third person character. So I'll just open it up. And this is basically where you have the camera for your mini map. So if we go straight over to the viewport here, we can see that up here, we have our camera component scene 2D, which is getting the view for our mini map. So what we're gonna do is just deselect that. We're gonna add a component up in the top left. We're gonna add a plane like so. So add a plane, I'll just call this arrow icon, and I'll just move this up a bit to be above the player. The material of this, we're gonna set to be that arrow we've just made. So that was called map arrow mat, like so. And if we just rotate this to face forwards, we now have our transparent arrow here. And this is gonna work perfectly. However, there's a few small issues with this. So if we compile, save, we can test this out. So what you can see is that this is working technically, but up in the top left, you can see that we can still see our player on this map here, and the, our player can also see this arrow, which again, we obviously don't want. Also, don't worry about the blueprint compile error in the top left. You won't have that. That's just something because of what I did. So don't worry about that. That's just something on my end. You shouldn't have that. So to get over that issue of being able to see the arrow and the player, what we can do is just go to event graph here. Actually, also while we still have the arrow selected, what we're gonna do is scroll down and where it says cast shadow, we're just going to untick that so it's not going to cast a shadow for us. Then we compile, and what we're going to do first is make it so the camera can't see the player. So what we're going to do is after add to viewport here, we're going to drag and drop and get a reference to our minimap, which is obviously our minimap camera. So we'll drag and drop that in there. Out of this, we're going to hide component, plug that into add to viewport there. Target is the minimap, and the in component is going to be our mesh. So this is our player. So we can do that like so. This means that the minimap won't show our player on there at all. And then to make it so we can't see the arrow, all we need to do is select it, search for owner and tick owner no see. That means that we won't see this arrow. So if we compile, save, minimize and hit play to test this, we can see that we no longer see the arrow. We can't see it at all. 
and up in the top left in the minimap we can't see the player either so we can only see the arrow in the minimap and we can't see the arrow in the actual game itself so this works perfectly so that is basically that part done for the arrow icon instead of the player so what we're going to do next is we're going to make it so we can get the map to be full size or make it bigger instead of just minimap so to do this what we're going to do is we're going to open up our minimap ui like so and again this is where i have that compile error but you won't have this this is just from where i made it earlier so to do this what we're going to do is just duplicate this image here which is obviously our minimap so control c control v like so and then we're just going to scale this up to be the size that we want the actual map to be so what I found earlier was 1000 by 1000 was a good size for me. And then I'm just gonna anchor this to be in the middle of the screen like so. So I'll just move it to be perfectly centered how I want. So I think that's gonna be good for me. So now we have our main map in the middle of the screen as well. Obviously make this how big, how small you want and the correct size for you as well. Then what we want to do is make it so this isn't visible by default. And then when we do make this visible, the minimap isn't. So we only have one on screen at a time. So to do that, what we're gonna do is select our main map here under image, what we're going to do is leave that the same. And then if we scroll down to visibility, what we're going to do is make it hidden by default. And we're going to hit bind, create binding. Out of this, we're just going to move the return node out here and we're just going to duplicate it. So control C, control V, so we have two. The top will be visible, bottom will be hidden. Then we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, plug that into the get visibility there. True will be the top return node, false will be the bottom. So true goes into visible false goes into hidden and then for the condition of this we want to make a boolean so we're going to create a new variable and we're going to call this one show map leaving it as a boolean and plug that in there like so compile leave the default value as false like that so what we're going to do is if show map is true we're going to make it visible if show map is false we're going to make it hidden then if we go back to the designer select our mini map and then do the same thing scroll down visibility keep it as visible this time and then hit bind create binding what we're going to do is move this out again duplicate it like so except this time the top one is hidden and the bottom one is visible but we're going to do the same thing hold down b left click to get a branch true goes into the top which is hidden false goes into the bottom which is visible condition is again show map so this time if we're showing the map we want the mini map to be hidden so we compile save and this should work now we just need to set a key to actually show this map so to do that, we're going to go back to our third person character blueprint. I'm going to right click. I'm going to get an M keyboard event like so. Or we can create an action mapping, which is edit project settings. Once this loads, we'll scroll down to input down here. Hit plus action mappings. I'm going to call this one map. And I'll set this to the M keyboard event like so. And this just means we can set this to be multiple keys, different keys for different consoles, and also set up key bindings if we want. So we can close that, delete this M key here, and we'll just search for map like so. So map, action mapping, action event there. Out of pressed, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a flip flop and this is just gonna toggle between two different values, which is obviously true and false for showing and hiding the map. And then to actually set this, what we're gonna do, to set this boolean, what we're gonna do is come out the return value of this create minimap UI widget up here and we're going to set show map like that. That's gonna go into A and this one's gonna be true. So when we first press M, it's going to set this to be true so we are showing the map and if we just duplicate that plug that into b untick it so we're setting it to false put the target as our return value again compile we have no errors and this should now work so this is going to set our map to be big and or small so we can minimize this hit play to test it again we can see our mini map is working in the top left we have our icon instead of the player there and if we press m the mini map is gone and the bigger map is on screen and we can do this like so so if we keep pressing m it's gonna to toggle between these two different values and two different maps like that. Now again, like I said, we can change it so this is more zoomed out instead. So to do that, we're just gonna go back to our player blueprint here. And then what we're gonna do is after this, what we're gonna get is we're gonna get a reference to our minimap camera here. So just drag and drop that in. We're gonna come out of this and we're going to set FOV, or sorry, set field of view like so. Plug that into A and then duplicate this, plug it into B like that. The target is minimap again. For the bottom one, this is when our map is closed. So this is the normal field of view for the mini map. So for me, that's 90, but set this to whatever it is for you. So what your default one is. And then I want to make it more zoomed out for the actual map. So if you increase the value, it's going to get more zoomed out. So I'll do that. So this is at 90 now. So I set it to 120, that should be more zoomed out. So we can test this. If I hit M, it's more zoomed out like that. As you can see, we have a bigger field of view and we are seeing much more on the map. If we press M, it's going to go back to normal for the mini map. So this looks perfect like that. 
or another way you could do it is just by changing the position so setting its location to be higher up instead or you can have two different cameras and just have the main map as that render instead so there are many different ways of doing it and i'm sure you can get those working but this also works great as well so i think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we wanted to do we've created it so that the mini map has an arrow icon instead of the player and the player can't see this icon either it's only on the map and also if we press m we can toggle open a bigger map like so instead of just the small mini map as well so like i say this works perfectly and i think that'll be it for this video so thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i hope you found it helpful and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.